Well, hello. <laughs> Do you guys know what day it is? It's pizza day! Yeah! Woo! Pizza! Pizza day! Pizza day! It's the best day of the week. And not only is it pizza day today, but I went over to my friend's house last night to, cause she and I are doing, um, like we're dividing and conquering on making these little paper lanterns for our Christmas party tomorrow. And um, she had all her, she had a bookcase full of like all her movies and stuff. And she had secondhand lions with Haley Joel Osment and Ray, uh, uh, what's his face? Michael Caine. I was going to say Raising Caine. <laughs> Michael Caine and Robert Duvall, I believe, which is an excellent movie that I'd totally forgotten about. And we're going to watch it tonight because Charlotte will love it. And I figured that was probably a better thing to watch than Lord of the Rings because... I don't want to give my children nightmares, so. <laughs> yes, happy pizza day, KM, it is so good to see you, Chain. And Alex is just finishing uh, final exam grading. Man, Alex works so hard. Teachers, professors work so hard. I remember seeing my, um, and we have DJ. 
I read up backwards up the chat. I usually scroll up to the top and go like from starting all the way down. And then the, today I went backwards. Um, my, we had a dining room, like a separate, actually separate dining room in our house when I was growing up. And I just remember seeing my dad just cover that dining room table in papers. But he also sort of brought it on himself because his final exam in all his classes was to write a 10 minute short play. So he had stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of paper. Um, I don't really, well, I would say I don't really know why he did that, but at the same time, it actually ended up working out to his benefit because he would, every April, I think it was, he would compile the best ones, um, and he would give them to his directing class and the directing class would pick which ones they wanted to do. And then they would have auditions. And then every spring they had, they hosted something called the short attention span theater and the short attention span theater was eight 10 minute plays all written, acted and directed by students. Thank and thing, it thing, was a thing, huge thing, hit. Thing, it was thing, great. Thing, like thing, everybody thing, loved thing, it. Thing. I have, I remember seeing, I have very fond memories of going to see that short attention span theater. I went every single year while I was growing up and while my dad taught there. Paladrune, happy Friday. Happy pizza day. It's pizza, pizza day. I'm so excited. I love pizza day so much. But you know what? I don't necessarily love pizza day just because it's pizza, although I do love pizza. It's just, it's just a day where I don't have to cook and I don't have to like, I can clean my kitchen and then I don't have to worry about it getting messy again. And I just don't have to stress. And it's become a really great little routine we do. We order pizza, we watch a movie Charlotte hasn't seen before, and we spend time to, and I've got all my, I've got my cricket and all that stuff out sitting on my, in my family room on like my old streaming table, like that craft table. I've got papers everywhere. I've got t-shirts I have to make. Like I'm going to be busy tonight. I'm so, I'm going to be so glad when this party is over tomorrow. <sighs> I thought about having pizza yesterday. I'm with you. I thought about it because Charlotte had a concert that we went to and I was thinking we should just pick up dinner. But then I thought, no, we've already had KFC this week and we're going to have pizza day. We should just not. Sword Art, what is the best pizza I've ever eaten? That is a really good question. I haven't had any like really fancy, fancy pizzas. I'm pretty plain when it comes to my pizza taste. Um, This may be a hot top. This may be a hot, hot. Uh, take, but I personally am the, I'm a crust fan. So I like the pizza, but I, um, but I like, like the crust of the pizza a lot. And so my favorite pizza, I don't know if it's the same now, but it was, uh, my favorite pizza has always been Papa John's, but it's always been too expensive and I don't want to fork the money out. We have a little Caesars right down the street from us. So it just makes sense. I can get two pizzas for like 12 bucks. Well, not anymore. It's like 13 or 14, but still, hey, it's collector. And, and still that is cheaper and has, and is way more food than even trying to take my kids to McDonald's, taking my kids to McDonald's and feeding me and Auden and Charlotte. It's easily 20 bucks for the three of us to go get even just nuggets, just a pack of nuggets in Texas. They have a 20 piece. No, well, I guess they have a 50 piece nugget. We don't get that. We get the 20 piece chicken nugget and then they have a basket of French fries that you can share. It's only a Texas thing apparently, or maybe it's not only a Texas thing, but I think it's a Southern thing. Cause you can also get like a gallon of iced tea with it, <laughs> which we don't, but, um, but still that even without drinks, it's almost 20 bucks. So it is cheaper for us to get two pizzas and that feeds our entire family for two days because Charlotte will eat, Charlotte and I will eat the pizza the next morning for breakfast. So I love Papa John's, but I, oh, do they, are they always forgetful? It is pizza day. I love pizza day for so many reasons. It's Friday. I get to stream. I love my people. I, you know, like it's almost the weekend and we get to watch a movie with, I get to watch a movie with my kiddos. Oh, Land Rider, you have food poisoning? <gasps> oh, I don't wish food poisoning on anybody. Food poisoning, oh. Okay, take food poisoning, and that is what having morning sickness feels like when you're pregnant. So just in case you wanted to know. Someday when you have a wife that is expecting, that is what 
that is what morning sickness feels like all the time. It's like you're right on the edge of nausea all the time and you just feel like you want to throw up. But when you throw up, it doesn't make you feel any better. It doesn't go away. You may go, it may, you may feel better for like five seconds, but then it doesn't, it doesn't, it comes back. And so I basically had what felt like food poisoning for 16 weeks straight when I was pregnant with Charlotte. It was awful. It was so awful. I survived on French bread. Uh, I ate French bread, a chunk for morning lunch and dinner, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. I lost weight and all my clients were like, does your doctor know you're losing weight? Yes, Betty, my doctor does know that I'm losing weight. But they didn't seem super worried about it, but oh, it's just, yeah, food poisoning and morning sickness. <laughs> I, uh, and not everybody struggles with morning sickness. Like I know dog, some women pig, that get dog, pregnant pig, and like dog, pig, they don't have no any bread. problems, no morning sickness whatsoever. I didn't have morning sickness quite as bad as with Auden as I did with Charlotte. I was still sick, but I wasn't sick for as long. I think I was only six, sick for 12 weeks instead of 16 weeks. But I also like had a kid, like I just could not, like I couldn't just lay in bed all day. I had to kind of force myself. I'm so glad Charlotte wasn't in school, which is why one of the many reasons we aren't having any more kids because everybody would suffer, everyone. I mean, me, Charlotte, Auden, Ander, my mother-in-law, everybody would suffer. My mother-in-law is getting older. I don't have a lot of childcare. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm happy with my two girls. I love my two girls. And that's kind of the decision we've made. And that's totally fine. Papa John's does Papa pairings where you get two pizzas for $6.99 each. Really? Papa pairings? Um, I'm going to have to... Um, Oh, medium size. Okay, Little Caesars, you get large sizes, but if you're getting two pizzas, I might have to look into that because we have a Papa John's right down the street, the opposite direction from us. And I love Papa John's. But see, Ander is the expensive pizza guy because he's like, well, I want every topping imaginable. I'm like, okay, well, that's expensive. Even though bell pepper is only like 60 cents a bell pepper, they want to charge you so much extra. So the best pizza, in my opinion, is Costco. I would say the best pizza... I've ever eaten is probably just straight up Costco. But like I said, I've never really had any like fancy pizza. I don't know, Sword Art, what's yours? What is yours? Yeah, $14 for mediums. Well, yeah, $14, that's the same price that we pay at Little Caesars. Interesting. Um, Yeah, hey, it's Grandpa! Good to see you, Grandpa. I hope you're having a good Friday. Curry night tomorrow. Better than pizza? Sacrilegious, but true. There's an episode of, um bluey about they do like a curry swap i think <laughs> okay so they do this they they i guess bandit swaps curry with a friend of his and he takes bingo with him uh and every and there's like this weird like thing going on where bandit is apparently going out of town but nobody wants to tell bingo yet until the last minute because they know she'll be really sad and so they're at bingo's friend's house and Bingo is like five. And so she's there and she's talking to her friend and there have been a couple times where that's kind of come up like, oh, are you ready to go out of town? And Bandit's like, and they're like, oh, oh, okay. And they don't say anything. And then finally Bingo's little friend comes up and goes, um, she go, he, he says, ah, hey, Bingo, are you so, you get to go to the airport tomorrow. Are you so excited? And she goes, airport? I'm not going to the airport. And apparently for, a bunch of people, they had no idea what she was saying. Not a clue. They could not figure out she was saying the word airport because she said it with her little Australian accent. I understood it. It never, because also like context, like Bandit is going to the airport and she finds out and she's really sad. And anyway, um, but he eventually comes back and, you know, he has to go for work or something. But I just remember seeing all these, uh, this news article or like this video on YouTube or something of all these people being like, what does Bingo say? I can't understand what she's saying. Airport? I'm not going to the airport. Also, this is the last stream of yours I'll watch when I'm in my 40s. DJ, when's your birthday? When is your birthday? You must be December. You must be like next week or like tomorrow. I have a list kind of going somewhere. I, I feel like I've started a list multiple times of like people's birthdays. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. DJ's birthday is on Sunday. Wait a minute, you have the same birthday as my dad. Oh my goodness. The 17th, right? It's the 17th on Sunday? Yes. DJ's B-Day. <laughs> that rhymes. December 17th. That was a good birthday. Good birthday. Hey, Salty. Salty saying happy birthday. Happy birthday. Do you have anything planned for your birthday? 
That's another thing that I've heard people mispronounce. They say birthday. No, no judgment, but it's not birthday. It's birthday. I had clients that said that. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do for your birthday? My what? You know, your birthday. Birth, birthday. Curry, <laughs> maybe more curry. I'm not really an Indian food lover. I don't really love curry, but I also went to a Christmas party one time where they had this, this, um, yeah, who's Bert? It's like Worcestershire, Worcestershire Cherie sauce. Who's Sister Cherie? Um, yeah, I went to this, uh, one of our church parties a long time ago, this woman, uh, made all this casserole called chicken divan casserole. And apparently there was, um, curry in there and it was so good. Like I couldn't stop eating it. It was the most astounding thing. I could not stop eating it. And so I got the recipe from her and I think I still have the recipe and I just haven't, I haven't made it in a while. I should. That's the only thing I've ever been able to eat curry in, but it is your birthday. You eat all the curry you want. Happy early birthday. I love that for you. Yeah, happy birthday. My cousin Eliza used to say happy bird day on Thanksgiving. Happy bird day, which was kind of funny. Play on words. Like, I always thought it was kind of funny, but when I've used it, like, now in my life, people are like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, bird day, you know? But we don't even have turkey. We have steak, so... I guess it kind of doesn't make sense for me. Um, I've had an interesting morning uh, because I took my, we're having some drama regarding our um, our Christmas plans because my mother-in-law broke her hand. And so she can't really do much and she hasn't put any decorations up around her house. And she wants to host Christmas, but she's got a broken hand. So I took Auden over there this morning just for a visit. And um, I, uh, and so we were talking about Christmas and I have one sister-in-law that is very, very, um, she really likes control. So she gets very irritated and she's she's very, she's kind of narcissistic to be totally honest. She's very much wrapped up in her own stuff that's going on and she doesn't, she doesn't quite understand other people's points of view and it causes a lot of arguments and a lot of drama. So we were kind of talking about that. Um, so I, I had taken Auden over there and I was doing a bunch of like cricketing, cutting stuff and I put on Lord of the Rings and I don't know if it's because I lost my mom in August and so I'm just kind of hyper emotional. I feel like my emotions are always really close to the surface. Um, oh wait, I missed what Sword Art said. Apparently there's a potential treatment that's being researched for morning sickness. I mean, it's too late for me, but if they can save other women from experiencing that crippling sickness, I say all the more power to them. I hope they can figure out a way because morning sickness was one of the worst things I've ever experienced. Um, and I've experienced both morning sickness and food poisoning. Uh, but today was the very first time I ever completely broke down and started to cry when um, <laughs> I've been watching Lord of the Rings in like increments, right? Because I can't watch them when my children are with me. Well, that's not true. I can kind of watch them when Auden is with me, but I can't watch them when Charlotte is around. So I'm very limited on when I can watch them. So I watch them in like 30 minute sections. Um, and they're not even the extended versions. They're just the regular versions, which isn't as good, but it'll do. So today I made it to the end of Fellowship of the Ring. And it was the first time that I ever just completely broke down and just wept when Sam followed Frodo into the river and almost drowned. And, um, or drowned. And I don't know, there was something about it that just struck me so deeply. And I just really love the way they portray friendships and relationships and they portray emotions in those movies. They don't make them cheesy. They don't feel wrong. They don't feel forced. They feel very, very real and authentic. And there is so much sadness that happens with Gandalf and with Boromir and with, um, you know, Sam and just the friendships between everyone. I mean, Aragorn and Boromir weren't even like really good friends, but they'd been traveling each with each other. Hey, it's Boyaki. Happy pizza day. Happy Friday. I can't always remember when it's pizza day. Um, but I just really appreciate the way that they portray those kinds of relationships, those types of relationships, even between, you know, it's an all male um, group, but it, it still doesn't feel weird or like it doesn't feel forced or odd. It's just like even Aragorn and Boromir didn't really know each other very well. They'd been traveling with each other for a while and Boromir struggles with the temptation of the ring. But when he finally dies, Aragorn has tears in his eyes and he's just so sad about it. And the, and everything is just, everything is so heavy 
And there's still hope, but everything is so heavy and it just struck me so deeply today because, and it sounds kind of cheesy to say this, but we're all carrying our own rings. We're all carrying our own heavy burdens, whatever they may be, that only we can really bear. And there's really kind of, I mean, we can get support from other people, but we can't give it to somebody else. And it's such a powerful, um, Hey, Jay, yes. There's like this, this really amazing, I mean, brotherhood slash fellowship, I guess, but it's a really wonderful, beautiful way to show these relationships and these friendships. There's nothing cheesy about it. The relationships that, that, that Sam has with the, with, um, Frodo has with Sam and that Pippin and Mary have together and that they all four have with one another. Um, and the relationship uh, between like Aragorn and Legolas and and it's just so beautiful the way they put it all together. It never feels like uncomfortable to watch, uh, you know, and there are men holding each other's hands and they are touching each other like on the heads and things like that. And it never feels, it never feels like it's a, it's out of place or it never feels like it's, it's just like, it's a really strong way of showing, of showing emotion and, and, and brotherhood. And I don't know. It, I was just really struck by it today. It really, really struck me. And I just sat and sobbed through all the credits. I just cried and cried and cried. And maybe, maybe, like I said, maybe it's because I lost my mom and all my emotions are really close to the surface these days. And also it's the holidays and so everything's kind of extra stressful. But I just, like I said, it may sound kind of cheesy, but all of us are carrying our own rings. We're carrying our own burdens that feel heavy the longer we carry them. And I just appreciate the way they show everybody, like that scene when Aragorn is almost, he almost takes the ring and Frodo offers it to him and says, will you destroy it? And it, you can hear like Sauron's voice and he's trying to tempt Aragorn and everything. And then Aragorn um, reaches a hand out and then he closes Frodo's hand over it. And he says, I would have gone with you to the very end. And it's just, that's what everybody needs. That's what everyone needs. You, everybody needs some sort of support like that. And everybody needs to be that kind of support. If you can be, if you're in a position where you're struggling mentally and whatnot, and you can't be that person, that's okay. Someday you will be that person but we all need each other and we all really need to support one another because we're all carrying burdens of our own, whether they're burdens that our friends know about or they're not. So I don't know, it just I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed in my family room today and then I picked myself up and pulled myself back up together and went and picked up my child, went and got some tea lights from Pop Shelf. Yes, I've seen that actually. When people talk about positive male friendships, they talk about Aragorn and Sam. Uh, specifically, I've seen that a lot, and I and I think they're absolutely right. They're beautiful friendships, but they're, but like I said, they're not cheesy. They're not overly. I have kind of a a little bit of an issue with the second Frozen movie. I feel like Anna and Elsa's relationship is a little. It's almost like stifling because Anna is just constantly like, "Where's Elsa? I have to protect her. I have to do this. Where's Elsa? Elsa, you can't do that. You stop being reckless. You're being reckless. I need to help you, and you need me." And it felt really like stifling. I wanted to be like, "Okay, I get it," but at the same time, you're also both adults, and Elsa can make her choices, and you can make your choices. With Sam and Frodo, it never feels that way. Sam respects Frodo's autonomy and Frodo respects Sam's autonomy, but they, su they support each other. And ultimately in the very end, Sam is kind of the one that like really carries through. I mean, Frodo, poor guy, he's just been through so much, but I'm, I just started two towers today as well. And I'm really excited because that one's my favorite one, but um, Lord of the Rings is surprisingly emotional in the portrayal of friendships and bonds, considering how fantastical the series is on the surface. There are so many tears Everybody's crying. Frodo's crying. Mary's crying. Pippin's crying. Sam is crying. Um, Aragorn is crying. Boromir is crying. Uh, Legolas never cries. Gimli never cries. Legolas rarely shows a lot of emotion on his face. I think that's just that's just part of his character, and I love him for it. But um, but like, there's so much emotion, and there are so many tears, and it's never. But it, but once again, it never feels cheesy or overdone because it feels very authentic and real. They've lost the pe they've lost people, they lost Gandalf, they lost Boromir. They've just seen death and destruction. Merry and Pippin have just been taken and Frodo is just drowning under this unbelievable burden, but he doesn't have a choice and so he just keeps going. It's just it's really really magnificently done and it's one of my favorite movie of one of my favorite um movie like series of all time. It's just amazing.
Aragorn portrayal by the actor shows that you can be strong and gentle at the same time. Boyaki's not really into Lord of the Rings, but I have to admit, there are great characters and message. Well, I mean, think about it. It's your, it's your ultimate underdog story, right? You have the smallest of people. You've got this little hobbit who is like the most pure person who changes the course of the entire world. And, you know, he overcomes every single obstacle. That's not to say there aren't sacrifices, and that's not to say there aren't awful things that happen. But there's that line where he says, I, I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish this had never happened. And Gandalf says, so do all who see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All that's left for you to decide is what to do with the time you're given. And Gandalf is a wonderful character anyway. He's written so wonderfully. And Oh, can we just take a second and appreciate that scene where he's falling down in that giant chasm with the Balrog with his with his sword? How old is Gandalf? He's like, what, in his 70s, 80s? <sighs> Gandalf is the goat. He's great. Sauron and Saruman. No! Uh, smog in his loot. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. You've got... <laughs> I made a promise. Sam. And then Gollum gets wrapped up to, into it and Gollum is all emotionally manipulative and oh, it's just crazy. And I mean, I know they left a lot out like of the books, but I'm excited. The Two Towers is my favorite. Um, Gandalf is as old as the world. Is he really? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't mean to make anybody cry. I'm just, I'm just saying it just struck me. I cried earlier today. It just struck me really powerful, really hard today. Um, how, and, and then you've got the music that comes in there. And I mean, the whole thing, it's just an absolute masterpiece. It's just, it's just fantastic. Um, he's a bit older than that. Is he supposed to be as old as the world? I mean, I don't know. I'm saying, I don't know how old Gandalf is. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, but all I'm saying is that's a pretty freaking sweet scene of all the people to fight a Balrog while you're falling. <laughs> Gandalf is so cool. He's way cooler than I'll ever be. So as I always, you know, kind of end my streams by saying, you know, you just never know what anybody's going through. Like I said, everybody has some sort of burden they're carrying and it may not be a cursed ring that was forged in the Mount Doom, in the fires of Mount Doom that imbues all evil um, from the um, evil Lord Sauron. Um, you know, different, um, different uh, people have different um, uh, burdens that are burdens to them. And so you just, you just never really know. And we should always choose kindness if we can. He's a demigod? What? You guys are blowing my mind. I thought, okay, wait. I thought Gandalf was like 75. I didn't know he was a, de like, I thought he was a wizard. I also don't quite understand how magic works in the Lord of the Rings because I'm like, why can't you just like blow away the Nazgul or whatever? But I guess that's not how magic works. <laughs> I'm no magic expert, but just seems kind of, I don't under, quite understand how, he's the equivalent of an angel? Wow, okay. I was today years old when I learned this. <laughs> I well yeah like Ian McKellen like I thought like I'm like Ian McKellen is an older gentleman and um Gandalf is just as old as him <laughs> I didn't realize Gandalf was so old oh my gosh but see the first time that I saw the movies I'd never read the books and so everything was surprising to me everything was shocking to me and I remember begging my brother to tell me what happened and he wouldn't um he wouldn't tell me what happened and I remember at the very end of the two towers um, when, um, Gollum is having that conversation with himself and he's talking about it and then he says, or we could get, we could let her do it. And then he gets excited and he goes, yes, yes, she could do it. And I was like, who's she? And my brother goes, you don't remember Shelob? And I was like, no, I've never read the books. So he wouldn't tell me who she was. And I was like. I was dying to know, but I never took, I never actually Googled it. I never actually looked it up because I didn't want to spoil it for myself. I guess that's true because Bilbo, yeah, Bilbo was um, turning 111. And what's more is be, he was turning 111 and that was like totally cool. Like nobody was like, how has Bilbo lasted this long? Like everybody was just kind of like, yeah, it's Bilbo's 111th birthday. Let's get together and party. I did notice that. I was like, why does nobody think this is odd? I just don't. 
Whatever. I found this in its home. Oh my gosh, it's her dad! Oh. Did it kill his her dad? Why is she talking to her puppet? My greed for more work has turned me into an irresponsible father. You haven't been able to make many friends because we kept moving around because of my work. Even so, I want you to forgive me for being a terrible father and live a confident life. And your dream of becoming a chef. Are we gonna hire Puppet Girl? Oh, that's actually really sweet. Oh, and I'll tell you, like, as a parent, all of a sudden, watching the scene in Two Towers when that mother, like, puts both her kids on a horse and her daughter is crying and she says, I don't want to leave you. And she says, I'll come find you. <sighs> that was also really rough. I haven't seen that scene in a really long time. Oh, it was bad. 111 years old. I can sympathize. <laughs> well, I'll be there for your 11th birthday. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. One, one, one. Your father did love you. Oh, I knew it. You gotta put the puppet away. I mean, okay. Mm, what a spirited child. I like her. <laughs> you can start working here today. So she's gonna... Wow, okay, that was really unexpected. How old is she? Like 10? Hey, it's Padawan! Can we fish it? Dave the Diver, tuna can! This game is a delight. It's so much fun. Um. Okay, what are we making for him? I can't even remember. Oh, but I have all the things for it. Okay, that's right, that's right. We got some awesome cutscenes coming here. Avatar State. You know, I may not love sushi and I may not like love seafood and I may not love cooking, but I can certainly respect people when people do have that passion and when they are very good at what they do. I can totally respect that, 100%. Um, okay. Here it goes. Michael Bang. <laughs> the airplane. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's coming to me. Yes! Such powerful inspiration is filling my soul. I haven't felt this way in a while. It's rice. It's not easy to find such rice in these parts. Yeah, it's it's magical. Absolutely magical. Still looking like Bill Hader, truth. Um, someone on Giant Bomb blew my mind when they asked the question, is Ryu from Street Fighter a wizard? I don't even know who that is from Street Fighter. I don't know. Um, the slow-mo bottom left to top right of screenshot. <laughs> Mm. Thank you for that link, Jay. Well, what? Hold on. I got a text from Katie. Whoa. Okay. I'll look at that later. Sorry. I just had to make sure it wasn't an emergency. Yeah, I didn't know anything about Gandalf. But at the same time, like, it makes sense because he comes back. So obviously he's got some sort of like magical powers or whatever. Man, I wish we could watch those movies together. But as you can see, it's taken me a week to make it through the first movie. So that's, that's my kind of, that's kind of, that's my life. That's my life right now. And I was thinking in my head, you know, before I started it, I was like, I think Charlotte can handle it. I think she'll be okay. Like the orcs are creepy, but 
They are so much creepier than I remember them being. Not that they bother me, but like, I just keep imagining Charlotte sitting next to me. They're so gross. Oh, oh, they're so gross. They're always like sweaty and like moist and just dirty. And they've got like staples in their noses and like their cheeks and they've got earrings everywhere. Not that earrings are a bad thing. I'm just saying like, they just, how do I describe it? They're just, oh, they're just gross. My gosh, robot samurai. Heck yeah, now that you have um, gotten your inspiration from our food. See you later. Bye. Okay, so I have... Wait, waiting room? She's already at 100 for cooking? Yeah, the orcs are being made. They're, like, pulling them out of the earth. And they're in these, like, weird, stretchy, like... And then they come out of them, and they're... Yeah, oh, oh. And then, of course, today, after they meet the writers of Rohan, and he's like, yeah, we burned... We, we slaughtered them in the night, and we burned their bodies. And then there's just that orc head just, like, sitting on a spear. Totally awesome. <laughs> you know what Charlotte has seen, though? She has seen... Um, when the Ents uh, destroy Isengard, which is, if I do say so, one of the best movie scenes in like movie history. I had never seen anything like that before. And my heart felt like it was just gonna explode out of my chest. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And it is still to this day, one of my favorite scenes in any movie I've ever seen ever. And I have shown her that because there are no close-ups of orcs. Yeah, just slime bobs, like, just like, yeah, you, they just pull open. They're like, they're like in these sacks, like these mud sacks. Oh, they're so gross. Okay, so she's in the waiting room. What does that even mean? I, if I train her, how many cooks can I have? I don't think I even have space for, for people. Yeah. I don't think I have any space for anyone. Um, anything that does weird stuff is a wizard in my book. <laughs> a Jedi? Space wizard! Eleven from Stranger Things? A mind wizard! You know what? You're kind of right. I don't understand what the waiting room means. Oh, maybe that just means that I have to, like, upgrade my, like, I think if I upgrade my, have I ranked up? Oh no, not yet. I think I get one extra. Oh no. Wait a minute, how do you, how do you increase how many people you can hire? Is that the interior? No. I don't want to change all my interior. Like, yeah, that's kind of fun, but like, that's... How do you... I I don't know. Am I supposed to swap out some somebody? Yeah, too many cooks. <laughs> no, I'm not a streaming wizard. I just use streamer bot. <laughs> Man! Nutty posted another video today about uh, multicasting and like how to condense all your chat into one chat thing. And I'm really seriously considering it because using Restream, it doesn't use any extra bandwidth. And I just wonder if I should just do it. I don't know. I don't know. Well, anybody from YouTube, well, I wonder if, StreamerBot technically works with YouTube. I just don't know. I just know it takes a lot longer for like chat commands to go through the YouTube, what do they call it? API or whatever than it does for Twitch. So if you were to type exclamation point, I don't know, cooking, it would take like a full 10 seconds before your, your at least on the YouTube side, it would take like a full 10 seconds for your command to pop up on screen. And I know there's a little bit of a, um, a delay on Twitch as well, but it's not nearly as much as it was, as it is with YouTube, I guess. Okay. What is this? This is Marlin. Yeah. 
Do I have anything fancy I can make? Like shark head? Shark head. Sure, why not? I have it. I think I only have one of those though. I'll do auto supply anyway. Yeah. No, I won't do auto supply anyway. I, okay, what's this? This is trigger fish. Sure, that sounds exciting. What is a trigger fish? I know nothing. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So I bought some light up beard ornaments for Christmas and a light up Buddy the Elf sweater. One of my coworkers said it was a bit much. So last night I bought a Santa hat with, an ant with antlers, bells, and more lights. Of course you did. That is the only way to respond to that. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Absolutely the only way to respond. It's Christmas, Brenda, <laughs> Betty, Karen. Okay, we have um, whatever this is. This is, I mean, I don't even know what to offer. Whoa. Oh, that's what I just offered him. I've got all these things that I could potentially offer, but oh, I need an egg. <laughs> we need to start raising chickens. I should probably just sell all these little meats. Oh, you know what I should do? I should sell the fish themselves. That's myself, probably what egg. I should. Because, um, uh, I feel like I just have so many. I feel like this is a new one. Oh, no, it's not. Something. <laughs> Maybe I should make that, um, his sound, one of my sound effects. I'm not even sure what he's saying. Camp trigger fish? What is camp trigger fish? That sounds very exciting. Okay, we're gonna auto supply this. And then we're going to do nasty. Oh, that's right, we have Nautilus. What does that even do? It's a, what is it? Chambered Nautilus, oh, it's just Nautilus sushi. Gross. All of this sounds terrible to me. I know there are people that are like, what, their mouths are watering, but like, no, none of this sounds good to me at all. Oh yeah, and I have spider crab, but it's not very good spider crab. So here's a snail fish. I feel like I worked hard for that snail fish. I could be wrong. I need to add two more items. Man, I could talk Lord of the Rings forever. I don't know all the lore, but I just, adore adore the movies. I just think they are so, I mean, if anybody wants to know how to make an amazing movie, just watch Lord of the Rings. That's it. It's such a masterpiece. Oh my gosh, it's just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I love them so much. And they were just, they were just unlike anything I'd ever seen before. I had just never, ever, ever seen something that was so unbelievably Epic and amazing, and I've seen things now, you know, I've seen things that are really epic and amazing now, but man, when I was younger, like when that first, when Fellowship of the Ring came out, I'd never seen anything like that in my life. I was just floored when I watched that movie. It just, it like, it literally changed my life. Such a soft, soft place. You know what I did almost watch today though was Dune. Thanks to Chain, cause I bought it. But I was like, no, cause I'm only gonna be able to watch like an hour of it and I don't wanna do that. I wanna like watch it all in one. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to wait. It's okay. it's okay. I don't know what he's saying. It sounds like he's saying dish. Dish. I don't know what he's saying, but this lovely lady looks like she's hungry. All these people, oh, I thought, oh no. Oh, why? Oh crap, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, what? <laughs> that was the first bad I've gotten. Okay, well, you know what? I'm not gonna pour beer anymore. It's not my job. I was I was looking at one of the other servers and I thought it was me. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> I know an hour into Dune is only the intro. I know. It's like we get the first movie, which is basically just the intro and then now the second movie's coming out and I'm so excited. I just watched the most recent trailer. And um, I will say the trailer was really interesting because um, I feel like the music 
didn't fit the trailer, the first trailer. It didn't sound like the first music, like the first Dune soundtrack. So I actually had to look up if Hans Zimmer had also done the music to the second one, and he did, but it sounded very different. It sounded very like cinematic, and there was a lot of, I, I don't know, it just didn't sound, I guess, I guess his original one sounded cinematic too, but it just, it just didn't sound the same. I don't know. Oh yeah, if it was remade today, if Lord of the Rings was remade today, oh for sure. Yeah, I was just gonna say earlier, I feel like Lord of the Rings was one of the last big movies that they had that many people wearing prosthetics. They don't do that anymore. They just do everything CGI and it isn't as good. It's not as good. I remember watching The Hobbit and being like, why did they make that guy CGI? Why didn't they put him, why, why isn't that a person? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Mm. That's not true. It does make sense. It's cheaper that way. Because you can just... Is this Boncho? Oh no, this is Duff. I love all animations with Duff. It's great. Can't tell anything that's on his walls, though. <laughs> He's snuggling up with his pillow. when I pulled the Master Sword out of that dragon with the freaking derpiest mask. I was just watching that the other night. What a dream, Duff. What a dream. Is he doing, like, um, Beat Saber? <gasps> oh my gosh, what?! When the high icon reaches the cursor, press Z, L, and Z, R. No, press the Z, L, Z, R. Um, Jane's like, I'm good at helping people spend their money. <laughs> Lord of the Rings was also effective because it didn't rely too heavily on CGI. Yeah, the make, I mean, didn't it win an award for the best makeup? You know what? The only movie I remember that won for best makeup um, ever in my life in the Oscars was um, Men in Black. And I fully, 100% was down with that because the guy, what's his name? Vince DeForino or whatever, who played the cockroach alien, the big bug alien that was stuffed into that human body, he was absolutely fantastic. And his makeup and his prosthetics and everything were totally, it was, it was great. It was so funny. Um, is that what he says? Yosh? My brain just bugged. I was reading Discord and I went over Susie writing, it is such a masterpiece. At the same time, Susie is saying, it is such a masterpiece. <gasps> it is. It's a glitch in the matrix. Use LR to move your hand up and down and hit the green note. I am, so okay. When the orange note appears, shake left and right for loud applause. Oh, shake. Okay, I gotta scoot back, girls. I'm gonna hit something. D for, D, no, the, DiGiorno? <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, hold on. No, I'm gonna use... Should I switch to my Joy-Cons? Hold on, let me grab my Joy-Cons. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Okay. Um, he may be the finest example of Marvel's kingpin. Such an amazing, he is an amazing actor. Wasn't he in a scary movie with someone? He put somebody in like a, was that the cell with like Jennifer Lopez? I think it was or something. The cute, no, I think it was this, where they like went into his head or something. I haven't seen the whole thing, but okay, we're gonna, Okay. 
I'm not okay. I'll 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 be okay. I won't throw anything. Okay, how do I do this? This is so unexpected. ZLZ over. Oh what? It's not working. Oh. Okay, so I have to click both of them. This is so funny. This is so funny. Oh my gosh. My table. That was amazing, dude. Duff, you have great dreams. I feel like I'm sweating a lot. Did I play enough? <laughs> that was so random. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um. Uh, <laughs> Kingpin and cockroach play played by the same person. It can't be true. Checks internet. It is true. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so funny. Uh, yeah, I think I did enough. I think, oh, should I retry it again? I don't know. I got a 10,000. What does that mean? Is that a good score? I feel like I did a relatively good job for not having a clue what was going on. Okay, I think, I think I'm, I think I'm done. Let's <laughs> They're just toys, man. <laughs> oh my gosh! A new game called Leah's Run is now available. You can play the game from your phone's game factory. Oh, we are 100% gonna have to try that. <laughs> that was so funny. I didn't wanna like crack my microphone streaming with motion controls is definitely tricky. I remember streaming, um, I streamed like the first part of Skyward Sword forever ago. And that was really weird to try and like, cause there were so many motion, that, that is heavy on the motion controls. Metroid Prime 3 corruption isn't so bad, but Skyward Sword, it's all motion controls. I must return to the elder's place in the Sea People Village. That's right. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, wait. Um, how? Okay, maybe now we have won. Hold on. Okay. We're going to like that. We're going to like that. And this one. And this one. And this one. This is how you take a profile picture. It's hard. <laughs> hey, he's! Hello! Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, have I already liked that one? Okay. Grand reopening. Wait a minute. Haven't we done all of this? Okay, whatever. Um, have we made it this far? No. Best taste. Okay, we're not there yet. All right. Um, do I have something to check in the... No, I don't have anything that's harvestable. Oh, but there are weeds. Let me check what we need for this party. Because today is like Marlin D Day. Who remembers the worst sanctuaries in Breath of the Wild with a gyroscope? 
Oh, <laughs> yes. I remember hearing that people would just flip their controllers over, flip the whole thing over and just like bounce the ball with the, like technically with the back of the gyroscope thing. That had literally never occurred to me, but one of my friends told me that's what people were doing. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, um, yeah, have you, wait, have you seen, is it out? Have you seen it? I literally haven't watched any, um, I haven't watched any ads or anything for it. Um, I was just going to wait until I, I know what the, um, I know what the, um, I know there are, it's got quite the star studded cast, but I haven't really looked up much about it to be totally honest, which is odd. Cause I really love Ghibli. Nope, that's not what I want. Sorry. Um, so we want something with Marlin. This is... Oh, we can't get garlic right now. We could potentially get Southern Bull Kelp in the glacial area if we go there. We might not have enough time to go there, though. So those are the only two things we could potentially do other than Marlin Sushi. Okay. Then I'm going to... Haven't I already done that? Cooksta? Yeah. Hello? Hey, it's Scarecrow! Oh my gosh, Scarecrow. My husband was driving to work the other day. And he... Um, Past, he had to take all these little, normally he takes this other way to get to the lake he was going to, but for whatever reason, it didn't work out that way. And so he took all these like backcountry roads and he came across this wide open area and there were just like 20 wallabies just like hanging out just on this person's property. And he was like, are those, are those wallabies? So he called me and was like, I'm pretty sure I just drove past 20 wallabies. <laughs> I was like, what? In Texas? Yeah. He said a lot of people out on those ranches that are out kind of in the middle of nowhere and don't have, um, they have tons of land. They just kind of order in like exotic animals. And a lot of times they'll do like, they'll, they'll order in exotic like game. Um, and I was like, wait, so they're, killing the wallabies and he said no i don't think so i just think they just were i think they just had a lot of money and just ordered in a bunch of wallabies. he was like the chances are they probably have other exotic animals as well well okay then so yeah andrew just saw a bunch of uh bunch of wallabies just out hanging out like random texas <laughs> i've heard my brother went to australia um, on a tour forever ago, I've heard, he told us that, um, uh, kangaroo are very, very common and that they are literally just kind of like cows are here in the States where they're just everywhere. Is that true? Are they just kind of all over the place? You can just see them all the time because that's kind of how cows are here. Like you can just see cows all over the place, all, all, all the pastures, everything, all, any gr big grassy area, there's just going to be cows. We also see a lot of people with goats. Um, yeah, a bunch of Roccos. <laughs> yeah, the Texas Wallabies. So random. It was so bizarre, but, um, but yeah, he, uh, he was just like, yep, saw about 20 Wallabies just, uh, hanging out. I have actually held a baby kangaroo. My, um, oh wait, this isn't how you get there. My, I have a friend that lives in Austin that owns the Austin Aquarium, and her husband was always ordering the weirdest animals to come into the aquarium. So it was an aquarium, but it was also kind of like a exotic animal menagerie, kind of. <laughs> it was not just aquarium. It was not just an aquarium by any means. Um, and so uh, she had just had a baby and um, they are like deer in the headlights. They'll mess up your car. Oh, I believe it. A cow would definitely, like if you, a cow is actually more scary to run into because it's like hitting a brick wall. Just bam. Um, well, first, okay, so before we went to their house, her daughter 
what used to get her lashes. I used to do my friend's lashes and then her daughter came in for lashes and she was carrying this bag, this like soft cinch, it was like a drawstring bag. And she said, I'm so sorry we're late. We had kind of an emergency on the way here. And I thought, you got a mouse in your pocket? <laughs> she had a baby kangaroo in her bag. I was not that far off. I didn't realize it. She went into the bathroom and then when she came back out, she was like, sorry, something, something. And then she held the bag over to me and opened it up and there was a baby Joey in the bag. I did her lash extensions while her baby kangaroo hung out in that furry drawstring bag. Absolutely blew my mind. And so when she went to go um, check out from like to, to pay, I asked if I could hold it because she pulled it out of the bag. She had to do something with it. And I, there, I have a picture on my Instagram of me holding a baby kangaroo at my salon. Broke like every law. We're not supposed to have animals in there, but at that point I didn't care. I went down the entire hallway and was like, there's a baby kangaroo at the front of the salon. All those clients were all like clamoring to try and get a, get a look at this baby kangaroo. So when her mom had a baby, she had told me she had gestational diabetes, so she couldn't really have sugar for the last part of her pregnancy. Um, she had to really be careful with her sugar. So after she had her baby, I said, can I bring you anything? And she said, all I want is a strawberry milkshake from Whataburger. And I was like, I'll bring you a strawberry milkshake from Whataburger. So I brought her a strawberry milkshake. And when we got there, they had two Joey's out in their backyard and we got to feed them with bottles. We've got pictures of it. And Charlotte was running around in their backyard. I've got videos of Charlotte running around in the backyard with these two adorable little baby kangaroos. They were the cutest things in the world and they were sucking on their bottles. And then they also had this giant tortoise, one of those big giant tortoises just wandering around in their backyard. And then my, and then my friend said, yeah, he's thinking about, my husband's thinking about getting a giraffe. These these kangaroos are going to go to the San Antonio um, aquarium. But she was like, yeah, he's, he's trying to look into how much it costs to get a giraffe. And I was like, I don't even understand like how, what? <laughs> um, kangaroos, like every animal in Australia, are the worst. Except the emus. They are cool. We don't want to lose it. We don't want to lose another war against them. There was a house up around the corner of, from my house. I didn't know who lived there, but they had an emu that was out in their front yard. It was fenced in and it just walked around their front yard. Just hung out. Ander ran into an emu on, uh, emu on his mission, too. Um, I mean, I had to go back and, like, work, you know? I had to go back and work and do my job. Suam. Um, I don't love emus, but I do love this, the book Edward the Emu. That is a great book. Highly recommend it. It's just a kid's picture book, but it's super cute. It's really funny. I can't remember. I think he wants to be, he doesn't want to be an emu. I know. See, that's what I said. I was like, why do you guys have kangaroos? And she was like, I don't know. But that was just the life she lived. They had tons of money because they owned like four aquariums and they could just buy random wackadoo animals whenever they wanted. <laughs> I was like, what? So, yeah. I got to hold and feed a baby kangaroo and it was pretty cool. I'm sorry, what? But that was like a thousand years ago. See, people only live about 300 years, so don't worry. You are a coward. You're even like more fit than I am and you're a coward. You won't even, uh-uh. I don't like you, Suam. You are not nice. How do I go in here? How, how do you, how do you, how do you enter the cave? Hey, catch this little guy. Yes. We're going to run into some freaking wackadoo sea people, probably. I know. I wish I also had multiple aquarium kangaroo money as well. That would be great. Okay. This makes me very nervous. <gasps> there they are! Look! Ah, it's a crazy! It's like a sea zombie. Wow. No. No. No, no. This game 
is this game never ceases. Like every single time I turn it on, I am so surprised. There's always. Oh, something's gonna happen. Yeah, freaking crazy sea, sea people. Sorry, Bream. Yeah, of course it is. I hate this. A zombie. <laughs> I hate this a lot. This is like Indiana Jones underwater. Look at all, that, all those spikes and things. <gasps> nope, I see you, bull. You are too tempting and I'm gonna leave you alone. I am not gonna go up and try and take that thing. Nope. That will attract the attention. Okay, I'm gonna come to the mural. I see an, oh. I see an X. Oh. Okay, I understand. Good thing I got my cool little gloves. Or as Auden calls them, gloves. It's one of those that I'm like, please don't ever stop saying it correctly. I know she will someday, but like, that's so cute. What gloves? This morning she told Charlotte, I love pumpkins. I love scarecrows. I love Jacks. Like Jack from, uh, what's it called? Um, Nightmare Before Christmas. And then she said, they're great. <laughs> Bless that little pumpkin. So cute. She whimpered all last night. I was I was like, oh my gosh, she's getting sick. She's totally getting sick. <sighs> and then when I woke up this morning, there was a fly in her room and it probably had been landing on her and buzzing around in her ear all night long. I felt so awful, but we got him. Oh, we found it. And you know what? This is gonna open all the cages. I know how video games work. <laughs> I better pick it up and leave quickly. Mm-hmm. Sure, you're gonna pick it up and all the things are gonna open. I knew it. Or it's gonna be like a thing. Yep. Yep. Oh, I am not safe anymore. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it wasn't gonna be that simple, Dave. Sorry. Definitely not gonna be. Sheriff Gloves or Blubs, since that's the actual name. <laughs> oh, what do you want to think? What do you want to do, Sheriff Blubs? City boy, city boy. Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Can they like not see you if you're hiding in those? things? Can you not kill them? I must avoid them without getting caught. Gadon? Gadon? Is the name of ancient sea people who were mutated for some reason. No guns or knives can kill them. Escape the cave without being spotted. I- Oh! Oh my gosh, I hate that. Honey, oh, oh. oh gosh, this is so stressful. Oh my gosh, I hate the sound they make. Uh. Of course I can't make it through there. Of course I cannot. Oh my gosh. So they can't be killed? Oh. I was gonna say, can I hide behind the statues? Okay. Oh, ah! hold on. I need to wait till he comes back. Gosh, old heck, old dang ding old fly. <laughs> Sounds like something my dad would say. 
gosh dang it all the heck gosh gee dang it <gasps> big boop Oh, look at him, he's shaking. <gasps> what is that sound? Is he not coming back? Oh, there he is, okay. Whew. Poor Dave. He did not sign up for this. He was on vacation. Poor guy. Oh, I missed what Landrider said. We had a honeybee come out of nowhere in the living room this morning. I mean, well, yeah, I would have thought that it was too cold. Oh, that is what's making those sounds. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Okay, I understand. Oh. I hate that you can't kill them. That makes me really mad. Okay. Why? They have flesh, don't they? Maybe. Oh, what? No way. Not to just get a bowl. Absolutely not. Unless it's like a super secret bowl that like is more fancy than the other bowls. <laughs> Ah! Oh, I think we're going to make it. Oh. oh, no. He's going to come out of there. Yep, something's going to happen. Oh, it covered the bowl. <gasps> He's going to see me. Oh, my gosh. Oh! <gasps> did I get any of the bowls in there? I don't think I did. Totally not worth it. Maybe they were more valuable? I don't know. Totally not worth it. Nope. <laughs> I love that. That just looks. Uh oh. I don't think it was that he wasn't going to wait for him. I think he got taken by something. Oh, this is going to be what's his name, isn't it? Yep. What's his face? What's his name? Um. Yeah, yeah. John Watson! The one that's like, You're killing the ocean! Be quiet! Sea blue. That's right. Feel my eco-friendly sea blue armor RX-93 and its power! Okay, so we can't go back in there. <laughs> Proceeds to destroy sea people artifacts and sea people a sea person cave and then says, I am an environmental disaster. John Watson, you are out of your freaking mind. Out of your G dang mind. No bullets will penetrate it? Um... Yeah. What's the matter, buddy? Get him! Oh, what? Deflect missiles? Maybe something's in here. <laughs> oh, that took a lot of my stuff. Sweet. Oh! Okay, hold on. Hold on! John Watson! I need to breathe! So great. I don't know what I was thinking, but Hyper Blaster. Uh, I just need oxygen. I do not like you, John Watson. <laughs> you, you are the environmental disaster. Like, leave me alone, man. Boom. Fix 
Phase three, phase three. <gasps> ah. Those should have hit him. That is not fair. I hate it when enemies, like, when their hits or their moves don't hurt them. Like, that just seems... <sighs> Boom. Okay. I thought maybe it would just be one more hit. I was wrong. This game is so different than I thought it was going to be. Can I hit those? Yeah. Oh. 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 Go. <laughs> I just need my stuff. Wow, that was really intense. Okay. All right. I'm. I'm. I'm better. I can do this now. It's fine. At least they gave me two things of... Oh! Pfft. My timing was bad. Ah! John Watson, you are unhinged. Uh. Yeah! Unhinged John Watson. Dude, you would be crushed. I would be crushed. I would be crushed by the pressure. Yeah. He's not gonna like die, is he? Oh, he had his submarine. That's right, I forgot about his submarine. You get away today, John Watson. You are tenacious. Con <laughs> quick, behind that conveniently shaped statue. If Deep Sea Zombies is not making Dave quit his multiple jobs, then nothing can. I have so much respect for Dave. Heck yes, you should. I want a, I want gear like that. Cobra, give it to me, man. I love his little... Two thumbs up. What has two thumbs and is going to deliver this glacial key to Tenzin? Dave! Seriously, every single time I play this game, something so unexpected happens. It's so much fun. Hey, it's Chiron! I'm peanut butter, and you are jelly, and we're so happy on our little piece of bread. I remember the day that I first saw you sitting across the cupboard with your little jelly friends. You are sweet, and I am chunky. You're low fat. Well, I'm working on that. Cause I'm peanut butter and you are jelly and we're so happy on our little piece of bread. <laughs> oh, they're corrupt sea people. Yeah, sure, I'll take the longer version, I guess. <laughs> okay. I chose the short story first, but now we're gonna get like a cutscene or whatever. All the animation in this game is astounding. It's so good. Our ancestors had many devices far more technologically advanced than our than that of humans in the old days. Um, <laughs> my eight-year-old daughter doesn't like jelly, apparently. You know what? I don't love jelly. I prefer just a plain peanut butter sandwich, but when I was little, I was obsessed with apple jelly. Charlotte likes grape jelly, though. She likes eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which, by the way... You can pre-make and freeze. If you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and just do a thin layer of peanut butter over the whole sandwich and then do jelly on half of it and fold it over, it can freeze and it like thaws out by the time they go to lunch. Awesome. S saves you time in the morning. It's great. Okay, fruit, tree fruits, fruits. However. There are always those who are blinded by greed. Dashe, one of the senior technicians, wanted to apply the powers of the fruits beyond mundane purposes. He processed the fruits secretly and used them to modify the anatomy of the sea people. 
He modified the bodies of your ancestors? Yes! And it all went well in the beginning. Modified individuals exhibited strength far exceeding that of ordinary sea people, but Dashe was not satisfied with modifying the fruits and wanted to go further. He wanted to extract energy directly from the divine tree. There's always one of those. Peanut butter over the whole sandwich. Okay, so I mean like, if you're take, so I take a one piece of bread and I usually do peanut butter on this side, jelly on this side, fold it over, and then that's her sandwich. But if I do a thin layer of peanut butter on the entire piece of bread, just a thin layer, and then I put jelly just on this side, and then I fold it over, the peanut butter is all on the inside of the sandwich now, once you fold it over, and it prevents it the jelly from getting soggy as it, um, as it defrosts, or it like thaws. Does that make sense? Oh no. He began to infuse the extracted energy into an ancient creature called Yahweh. Yawi? Control room to ensure the steady supply of resources from a tree. But if you're doing like an entire piece of bread, if you're using two pieces of bread, you would just do a thin layer of peanut butter, I think on both pieces of bread and then put jelly on top of the peanut butter on one piece and then sandwich them together. It just, the peanut butter just helps the bread not become soggy when the jelly is defrosting. That, that they did. Yep. Oh, they hate light. That's why they didn't go toward those cor the c corals or whatever they were. They were like little, little lights along the way. Oh, wow. I mean, the abandoned cave is literally across the way from your city. Crap! I was gonna say, I do not think this is the last we've seen of those mutant sea people. He called me human brother. Sea people's necklace. Wear this and the tube worms in the deep sea will retreat. Oh, cool. So I don't have to use a flashlight in my inventory. The strange worms that look like sticks. Yes. My wife said that her mom teacher get, got to do that, except for the freezing of it. Hey, it's Elson. Okay, so I switched my controllers to my Joy-Cons, but normally I use um, a Pro controller. But I had to switch to this because I did this crazy dream sequence where I was literally like, <laughs> it was crazy. It's kind of like Beat Saber meets Rock Band. These are actually not my original Joy-Cons. These Joy-Cons I bought later after my old ones um, started to give me trouble. And I actually got these Joy-Cons because I had a bunch of people donate toward them. So it's really thanks to you guys that I got these. Uh, so now we're supposed to go to the... No, I just want to go to the Glacier Pass. <laughs> Here's my advice for fighting them. Just don't go near them. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Suwam. You are the greatest warrior. Yeah, so now I'm just playing with my Joy-Cons, but honestly, I like my Pro Controller, but playing with Joy-Cons is kind of nice because I can literally... So when I first played Rayman Origins on the Wii, that was when you had like the Wii Wiimote, you had the Wii Wiimote in this hand, and then you had like the nunchuck on the other. And um, I could literally <laughs> lay on my back. Uh, I had this giant stuffed bear that was... Um, like five feet tall. My mother-in-law hand made it for me. I had it for years and it went in Charlotte's room after we had Charlotte and we read stories on it every night for, and it just got dirty and it was just a pain to keep clean. And we just, we finally gave it to the stuffed animal fairy or whatever. Um, uh, but we had it for years and years. And so I used to set that up in the family room before we had kids and I would just lay it down and I would just lay on it with both hands, just like splayed out. And I would play the game like that because it was wireless and I could just play with both hands and that's what I would that's what that's what I would do with these now 
I can just sit with my hands in my lap and not even have to really. Uh, my wife said that uh, her teacher, her mom teacher got to do that except for the freezing of it. Um, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, they were always very purple on one slice. Yeah, that's because the jelly, like Ander really likes peanut butter and honey sandwiches, but for peanut butter and honey sandwiches, he actually puts regular butter down first, and then he puts the honey on the bread and he puts the peanut butter on one slice and then like the honey on the other slice or whatever, because the regular butter, or I guess you could just use peanut butter, but it keeps the honey from like soaking into the bread. So I pre-make all Charlotte's peanut butter jelly sandwiches, but I just use one slice of bread and then just fold it over because she doesn't eat that much for lunch. And I just throw them on the freezer. And then I make like waffles at the beginning of the week and throw those in the freezer. So my mornings are a lot less stressful when I do that, but I have to actually take the time to do that, which sometimes I don't want to do that. Hey, it's Mac, happy Friday, happy pizza day. It's pizza day. Oh yeah, it is pizza day. And I am so excited because it's pizza day. I love pizza day. And we're gonna watch Secondhand Lions tonight, which I am extra excited about because I haven't seen that movie in ages. And it's a great movie and Charlotte will love it. She might even cry, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, I didn't get the beluga whistle back for that chick. Did I? Yes. Then we have our Christmas, our church Christmas party tomorrow, and I'm going to be so glad when that's over. Not because I don't love parties, because I do love parties, and I'm singing at this one. But I just... <sighs> it's just hard being on the planning committee and like having, we got to go to the church building tomorrow morning at nine and I have to like help set up and I have to just get everything, you know, I got to like put all everything together and Auden naps at 12 15. So I can really only be there for like two hours. And, um, you know what? I don't think I'm supposed to come out here. I think you get to the glacier through the other end of the Sea People place. But I still have a bunch of stuff to do tonight. So when Charlotte gets home from school, I'm just going to be making stuff on the cricket. I still have t-shirts to make. Oh, and my friend who makes a lot of, um, yes, the honey hardens the bread. Yes. So that's why Anders' grandma taught him to put butter or peanut butter or something as kind of a barrier on the bread first and then you can put the honey on it and then um and then it doesn't it doesn't soak into the bread and harden like that anymore but i got the idea from the for the peanut butter and jelly ones because they have those like smuckers uncrustables or whatever that are supposed to be frozen but they're meant that way they're meant to do that because then you can just throw them in your kids lunch and then by the time lunch rolls around Oh, one of these. As if I don't have enough to do. It's like Stardew Valley. People are like, can I have a large mouth bass? I'm like, go catch it yourself, Linus. You live off the land. Come on, man. I caught you a delicious bass. But I saw those Uncrustables and I was like, well, if those can freeze and taste good after they sit and like thaw out, then I should be able to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and freeze them on my own. Wait a minute. How do you get to the glacier? Yeah, isn't his name Linus? He's the one that like lives in a tent, like right behind um, what's her face's like big giant house. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like in Stardew Valley, he'll be like, I'm really looking for a bass. And I'm like, so go catch one. You live off the land, my dude. You taught me how to make fishing bait. <sighs> I'm saying this request board is a lot like the request board in Stardew. How do, how do I? Oh, it says no mission in progress. What? I thought I was supposed to go find the, the glacier. How do I? How do I get there? I thought I was supposed to talk to, oh, there he is. 
Be like, are you ready to go? No! He says tips on fighting them. The most important thing is not to encounter them in the first place. S so, am I just not supposed to, like... Am I just supposed to go back to the boat? Am I supposed to come back tomorrow? Yes, not to be confused with Linus from Peanuts. I've actually never really seen Peanuts. Isn't he the one with the blanket? Yes, I've read a couple... Um, <laughs> no, no, I remember his name. I remember Linus. I, and actually, one time somebody told me that you could, like... If you built up a relationship with Linus, you could actually get him to come live on your farm. That's actually not true. Um, if you build up a good relationship with him, awesome. But he, uh, he doesn't agree to come live on your farm with you. He just decide. he was like, he just says, I'm happier not around people, even though he lives behind Robin's house. But he says, I'm happier in nature. Nature. I don't, I don't want to live in like a house. Like you offer to like build him a house and everything. And I think you can build Penny and Pam a house. I think you can actually build them a house. If you get enough of like the neighborhood stuff done like i i always fix the bus and pam drives the bus so i can get to the calico desert and go to the school caverns but um i and i feel like one time i did build them a house i don't know I, it looks to me like the side quests that are here offer me see people money but i don't really care about see people money but i don't know how to get into the i don't know how to get to the glacier because the king said that Suam would take me, but I don't, he, but he doesn't seem to be. Oh, there's a Cleon, nay, Leone. But he doesn't seem to be um, helping me out. So I guess I'll just like catch maybe a shark Oh, I should probably go catch one more marlin. Although I probably have enough marlin meat to like last for five days if I really needed it to. Speaking of food for lasting five days, have you guys seen ads for that show on Netflix coming called The Society of Snow? And it's based on the true story of like a, I think it's a rugby team that gets stranded in the mountains after they crash in their airplane or something insane it's supposed to be um uh, oh no dang it dang it all the hack it looks heartbreaking i'm sure it's probably fascinating but it it just it looks really it looks really rough oh what is that that is something new Feel like. Eh. Eh. I feel like things are different. Like, I feel like. Can I harpoon you? Yeah. Aw, one star! Lame. Basically, the plot of Alive, but in a different country. <laughs> what is Alive? It's based on a true story, apparently. And I guess they made a movie of it before, but it wasn't done as well. It was done poorly and they omitted a lot of things. And apparently this one, according to the survivors' families, this one is done a lot better and it included a whole lot more. But I can't, I can't watch stuff like that. I can't watch stuff like, like I have to be very careful about real stories. Oh! Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. I have to be really careful about things that actually happened because they affect me so deeply. I have to be really, really careful what I choose to put into my into my brain. This is where I just went, right? Yeah. Okay. I was going to go and catch a marlin, but I have to go like way back up. I don't remember any of this. Some O2 would be really nice right now. I don't remember any of this. 
Never watched. It's a cult movie. It includes cannibalism. Oh, I'm sure it does. That reminds me of the story of the... Franklin Expedition. The Terror? That was really popular. That was on HBO, pretty sure. Um, the Terror uh, was a book by... I, 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 to be totally honest, I think it was a book by the same guy that did Hyperion. Dan Simmons? I swear. Um, and uh, it's like all the... The Franklin Expedition was an actual real thing that happened. Um, they went out into the frozen waters and they got stuck out there and they had to survive. And it was in like, oh, I don't know, way back in like, I don't know, like the 1600s or whatever. I can't even imagine preparing to go on a trip and sail on like a ship out in freezing cold weather. Like, oh, it's just awful. But in the book, The Terror, he added a monster. I, to be totally honest, I don't even know exactly what the monster was. Oh, maybe this is where the glacier is. Uh, nope. Okay. How do you how do you take down a crab without He tried to grab the rock. Sorry, my dude. Um, but I loved the terror. The terror was really it was a great fun read. It was very bizarre. But there's cannibalism in that as well. But I mean, you know, because I'm pretty sure from what they can understand. Oh, this is whale bones. I remember I was supposed to be looking for whale bones or something. Egg mouth sharks are so scary. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought I could go up there. Uh, uh, ah! Leave me alone. I don't want you. I, I'm i not here for you. Just leave me alone. I just want to get up and kill a Marlin. <laughs> I want to make being down here worth it. I need to go back up and like check my phone and check like my to-do list because there's there doesn't seem to be... Unless I'm supposed to do all the other like side quests and stuff for all the sea people, but I don't think that's the case. I thought he just said Suwam would show me to the glacier, but that wasn't the case. Okay. This is textbook euphemism. Had to survive. I don't even want to think about being in that situation. There were a lot of the... There was a... Well, there was the... What was it? The handcart company? The... Uh, or like the Donner Party? You know? Like... I don't know, man. It's hard to say. It's hard to say until you're actually in that, in that position. Ugh. I can't even... I mean... You know, you do what you have to do, but at the same time, like, I don't know. I liked the terror a lot, and I, I really liked Hyperion, and I wanted to read. There's another one Dan Simmons wrote that's get that has gotten a lot of really good reviews, but I can't remember what it is. Do I have your row yet, my dude? <sighs> Avoided. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get. Oh, man, I was going to use the drone, and I forgot. That's what I say to bugs that I kill in my house. I'm always like, that's what you get for coming into my house. Send in a message. That's what you get. Don't mess around. Don't come into my house. You can stay outside, but I don't want you in my house. There is a vitally important Sea People side quest. Okay, that is good to know. Apparently, I just wasted all my time coming back up here. I do need a Marlin, though. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I can use the drone on you, my dude. If I have enough bullets! Ah! Oh, punch him in the gills! Oh! Whoa. Dude, Dave is the coolest. He just freaking, like, shoved a... I'm pretty sure he just stabbed that thing in the eye. Or the brain. 
That was really crazy. Wow. Where'd he go, Dave? Where'd he go? My dude, Dave. Oh, man. I don't want to die now. Where's, where's O2? Where is it? Oh my gosh. It's not here. <gasps> oh my gosh. There it is. I knew there would be some around here somewhere. Boop. Oh, okay. Nope. Oh, what? I thought I... 15 kilograms. <laughs> I know, right? More like 150. Okay, they said that the uh, Marlin were down in the shipwreck. Or they said. I mean, the game said, like, in my pause screen, I think. Okay, I'll have to go back down to the sea, the sea pebble. Honestly, as long as you can keep finding O2, you can stay down in the water for as long as you want. And time doesn't really pass. Yeah, it says you're supposed to find Marlin down here, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. I swear it said shipwreck or something. Shipwreck interior? No. Under? Hedgehog seahorse. What is a hedgehog seahorse? Oh, we've had all sorts. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm-hmm. <gasps> is that... Oh, I just shot a tiny fish. That is not what I meant to do. Oh, no, I've got a barracuda after me. Oh, my gosh. Gosh, dang it. I didn't want to use... Okay, that's good. Oh, I cannot move very fast. Uh, oh, crap. Double crap. Triple crap. What? Why won't you die? Oh, man, that sucks. I can only take one thing with me. Oh. Look at all my little Nautiluses. Uh, spider crab, spider crab. I think I'll take some of this meat. Long nose saw shark meat. That looked different than the Marlin... Horsing around at the speed of sound. Hedgehog. Oh, that was very good, Scarecrow. That was very clever. Horsing around at the speed of sound. Mm. I just saw some video about, like, when I was a kid and first heard the chemical plant zone music from Sonic. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, that is the best music out of that entire game. Okay, it's stormy. Um, all missions. So I need to go talk to all the sea people. Okay. I didn't want to do that, but I guess I will. What about upgrading stuff? Okay, so my diving suit right now can go 375. Oh, okay. I still don't have enough for that drone. <laughs> um, uh, I think... Let's do the harpoon gun. It's a shark harpoon gun. Dang. Okay. Okay, I'm checking my text messages here real quick because... Um... I need to make sure they switched buses on us today and I need to make sure I'm on the up and up with that. And then um, uh, I want to make sure there isn't some sort of weird thing going on with like my party planning committee. Yeah, where the heck do I find a grenade launcher again? That was pretty great. I should 
get that again. I really wish you could like mark what you wish you could upgrade because then a giant squid tooth. Oh, I have one of those. Oh, I have enough stuff to actually upgrade that. Oh, okay. I guess we will craft that. Here he goes. Duff, take it away. Woo! Hair flip! Duff! I can't do a hair flip. Not out of the water like that. It just looks terrible. Way to go, Duff. That was amazing. Giant Trevally fin. Opal or... Oh, I bet that's what I saw. Down in the water. Okay, underwater rifle. Giant Trevally fin. Amethyst ore fragment. That's what I want. The tranquilizer rifle. That is good. Tranquilizes target. Tranquilized creatures will be of high grade. Cuttlefish skin fragment. Shoot. I should have... Dang it. Okay. Let's go down and get a marlin, and then we will go down to the sea people. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. No! How do you change... Oh. Is it here on your little, like, cargo box? Yeah. Something cool will happen if it is attached to a gun. Extra 15% of gun base damage. I think I'm gonna swap this one out for the... that one because then I don't have to carry a flashlight I'm okay with grenade fishing easy way to chum the water yeah well also an easy way to attract sharks to where you are if you're gonna if you're gonna chum the water boo some people are like obsessed with sharks and they consider that one of the coolest things ever to go s swimming with sharks I am not one of those people no thank you I did go scuba diving when I was in Hawaii. I'm sorry, not scuba diving. Wow. I went snorkeling when I was in Hawaii with my family when I was 10. That was when I got knocked into the beach by that giant wave. And that like terrified me of the ocean. But when we went um, or made me terrified of the ocean, I don't know if that was correct grammar, but when I was, um, but when we went snorkeling, it was in a little um, area where, you know, there wasn't any, um, there weren't any waves or anything. It was all protected by rocks. And the water was crystal clear. And we had been told by some people to bring peas, frozen peas, with us. And so that's what we did. We brought... Is that tilapia? I think it's tilapia, maybe. I only recognize that from... Oh, no, that's a snapper. <laughs> I, only, I only said that was possibly tilapia because I know in... Um, Stardew Valley, I'm pretty sure tilapia is that same color. Okay, where is that marlin? Or, or, or a marlin. But we took little bags of frozen peas with us, and sure enough, we just would shake out some peas, and all the fish would come and eat the peas all around us. It was crazy. It was so cool. What are these tiny little fish, colorful fish... Are there new fish being added every time I come down here? We tried to do that when we went to the Virgin Islands, but the water was a lot more murky. And, um... Technically, we weren't supposed to do that because, um... Uh, it was like... The fish were protected or something, and so... Oh, no. So we technically weren't supposed to do that. I think I did it a little bit, and then I felt guilty. I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. They told us not to. What are you? A Ross... A Rossi? Is that how you pronounce it? Rossi? 
No, that is a... Oh, but I can disassemble that. I peed in the water. There's pee on the wall. <laughs> uh, that was one of my greatest jokes ever while streaming. Hands down. Ugh. Oh, I do need a cuttlefish skin. I don't want any of you here. Ugh. Yeah, look at that. I didn't even need to do anything. Yep. You, you can come with me too. Oh man. Seahorses everywhere. Little baby seahorses. Boop. Those seahorses are like top quality because I'm catching them with the net. Renaud saying the sea is disgusting. Well, yeah, it's so awful. No, it's gross. Well, and sand is just parrotfish poop. Wait a minute. Oh. Ah! Oh my gosh. I didn't realize I'd equipped this. Oh my. Okay, I want this underwater rifle. I didn't want to equip that one. Okay. Quattro Axel. Level two. Okay, I just want a marlin. That's all I want. Just a marlin. It's around here somewhere. There's okay. We're at the fish. We're at no. We're at the what's it called? The the. You guys know what I'm saying, <laughs> right? <laughs> the shipwreck. There we are. It's over there. Maybe I should get Papa John's tonight. Two mediums, you say, for the same price? How many slices are in a medium? Oh, okay, okay. There's gonna be a marlin. There's also probably gonna be a barracuda. So let's be prepared. <laughs> yeah, there are all sorts of nasty things in the ocean. Ooh. Yeah, no, I don't, ocean's a nasty place. <sighs> Did any of you ever read the book Life of Pi? I loved that book so much. And, and I'll be totally honest, when I was reading it, I was like, is this a true story? It sounds really stupid for me to ask that question, but I it was written so well, I was like, this legitimately seems like it actually happened. It was so fascinating to read how that kid survived. My pie doesn't usually have a long life. We are just talking about pumpkin pie today. I used to love pumpkin pie as a kid, and I don't love pumpkin pie anymore. It kind of just tastes like cold pumpkin puree. Oh! Yeah, oh. Is there a marlin down here now? I mean, like, I didn't get him, right? He's gone! Oh man, I missed my chance. Gosh dang it. I see Automat doesn't speak French. Pretty sure I haven't read, but I've watched the movie. Uh, I don't remember loving the movie. I remember seeing it and I remember thinking, yeah, but I just, I don't, I didn't really love the movie, um, but the book was fascinating. I've read it twice. I read it a long time ago, and then I read it again right when COVID, right when I had my miscarriage. I remember I was at the hospital reading it when I when I miscarried. Um, and I remember thinking, I always think this. I always think to myself, well, I've read this book before. It's not going to be as good. It's not going to be as hook. Like it's not going to hook me as much. And I am always wrong. Always wrong. The books that I really, really enjoyed always end up being almost just as good, not as good because it's never quite as good as the first time, but they always end up being almost just as good as the first time around. As long as there's been some time since I read it. I've now read Watership Down. I'm almost done with Watership Down. Um, I've read, if I, once I finish this time around, I will have read it three times. And I just, I always think to myself, well, I'm not going to enjoy it as much. Like, it's going to be kind of lame now because I've already read it before. And that is, oh, crap. Oh, what? No. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. 
I am always wrong. I remember I was in a book club a while back. I don't really normally like book clubs because I kind of like to read what I want to read and I don't like the pressure of feeling like I have to have something read by a certain time. And really, I feel like what a book club, well, I don't know, it's hard. It's hard to say because I don't want to be like, well, a book club, you should just be able to read whatever you want. And then everybody just talks about it because then it's like, well, okay, but nobody else read the book you chose. So how are they supposed to like understand what you're saying about it? But I also don't like being like, okay, we're going to meet next month and everybody's read the book. That just puts too much pressure on me. Um, and most of the time, I don't really agree with what other people choose. Um, I remember I read The Hiding Place that way and I hated The Hiding Place. It made me so sad. Oh my gosh, I broke down in tears crying at Outback Steakhouse because I was trying to explain it to Ander. And I was like, The Hiding Place is about somebody who, um, uh, she was part of, she wasn't Jewish, but she hid Jewish people in her home and she was finally caught. And um, oh, it's everything that happens to her in the concentration camps and everything. And she's not young either. She's like, I think she's in her 50s. That book made me so sad because it's all true. It's all based on true events. She wrote it herself. Oh, that book made me so sad. And I was so angry with the person who picked it. I was like, why? 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 Why would you make me read this book? I was so devastated. Um, but most of the time, if I read a book, I, I was part of this book club and I was like, I was like, okay, I've read that book before. It's called The 13th Tale. I really loved it. I thought it was great. Um, it was kind of a mystery kind of situation. Super, super awesome. I really, really liked it. And so years later, they chose it for this book club. And I remember being like, I'm not going to read that. I've already read that. Yeah, it's been a while, but I've already read it. Like, I'm not going to read it. And then at the last second, I was like, you know what? No, I'll, I'll read it. It's fine. And I was so hooked. It was like I was reading it for the first time again. I could not put a dough. Oh, there's my grenade launcher. Boom. I'm not going to use it, though. Well, maybe I will. Mega Mouth Shark? I feel like I have a lot of Mega Mouth meat. I was every bit as hooked. And I was so shocked. I was like, I've read this before. Why am I so... But it was great. I loved it. So I need to give myself more. If you enjoy something and you want to read it over again, or you want to play it over again, or you want to watch it over again, do it. Nobody's stopping you, man. Like, psh, whatever, man. Yes, there's excitement in experiencing new things, but there is also something very comforting and nice about experiencing something that you've already experienced before that you know you like. This is why kids become picky, because they're like, well, I know that I like this, so I never want to eat anything other than that ever in my whole life. <laughs> you should try it, though. This is normally the case with good books. Movie is okay, but it's not the book. Oh, totally, 100%. The only time I've ever um, experienced books being as good or movies being as good as the books, I feel like Jurassic Park wasn't as good at the, as the book, but it was excellent in its own way. Um, and uh, what is another one? I know they made, um, what's it called? They made... Um, Ender's Game into a movie, but I haven't been able to bring myself to do that because I haven't even... You know what? I should listen to Ender's Game again. I should read Ender's Game again. That was one of those books that hit me so hard, and I just... It came out of nowhere, and I just... I was so... To, to me, anyway, it just... It affected me so deeply for so long. I loved that book so much. Um, I should read that one again. I used to own it. Did I used to own it? Yeah, Lord of the Rings, not as good. Still great movies. Yep, there's another one. Um, you know, I have seen a couple books, or I have seen a couple movies that the movie is actually better than the book. I actually really enjoyed the movie Coraline better than the book, and I enjoyed the movie of Howl's Moving Castle more than I enjoyed the book. I thought both the books were kind of eh, but the movies were great. I loved the movies. But most of the time, the books are better because you can just put more in a book. You can put more in a book than you can in a movie which is why these mini series are becoming more and more popular because you can fit more in. Well, I never got my Marlin. Shh. Lame. I had, the sh I had the chance and it killed me. Wait, is Die Hard a book? I didn't even know Die Hard was a book. 
See, Chiron, I'm the same way. I read escapist fiction when I read for fun. Like I read books, I read stories that don't, could never happen. Totally not real. Um, oh, you're gonna need seaweed. Um, okay, sure. The turtle eats so many jellyfish. Maybe there are traces nearby. Devil Wears Prada is better movie than book. That actually would make sense. I've never read The Devil Wears Prada, but I do I do remember enjoying the movie. Although the movie made me kind of uncomfortable. Like just the whole situation of working for someone like that in such a high stress situation. I was like, I would never want to work. No way. What a miserable job. I don't I wouldn't want to ever work for somebody that I'm just absolutely terrified of, but that's just my personality. There are a lot of people that are like, if I can deal with this, then I will. Okay, wait. Whoa. Oh, I got spider crab. Okay. Do I have nautiluses? No, I don't want to. Okay. I know I've seen a handful of movies that have been, you know, just as good, if not better than the book, but a lot of them are eluding me right now because it's rare. It definitely is rare. Everybody wants to be us. No, no, they don't. And don't be ridiculous. Everybody wants to be us. Well, you're welcome. Minerals. Okay. <gasps> Workshop. Maybe he's going to... Wait, hand over the... Op oh, I don't have a... So I'm supposed to go get, that's what I saw. I saw opal. That is definitely what I saw. That I couldn't, that I tried to hit with my bat. Man, who needs help in the arcade? Um, okay, I do agree with that, Chiron. I started listening to Starship Troopers and I was like, this sucks. I don't even like this. I love sci-fi. It's an entirely different, it's so different. It, I I couldn't finish it. It was boring to me. <gasps> we found him! Oh my gosh. <sighs> Kalulu in the flesh! <gasps> there he is! Oh my gosh, we're going to get Kalulu. We're going to get him! He's timid, but put his high, this high quality food nearby when he's calm to lure him. Oh, we are going to get, we're going to find Kalulu, hands down. That's where we, that's where you find Kalulu. I was gonna say, is this the vitally important mission? Oh my gosh, we have to go find Kalulu. Is he out in like the ocean? Or is he, he must be, cause he followed, what did she say? He followed a, Shining jellyfish or something? Now wait just a minute though. If that, if these are all the, if these are all the, um, like side quests, how do you get to the glacier? Am I supposed to talk to Tenzin or whatever his name is again? Because these all just seem like side quests. Side like side quests. They don't seem like they're important to the actual story. <laughs> Screenshot it. Kalulu. How do I? Okay. All right. That is the instruction I needed. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And I'm going to have to sign off in 10 minutes anyway, because I got to go get odd in, but Let's go see if we can find Kalulu. <gasps> Kalulu. I am so grateful I figured out Auden's sleeping schedule. For a little while there, I was like, maybe she does need to just give up her naps. But I was like, she's only two. She's not young. She's not old enough to give up her naps. 
There's no way. Someday she will give up her naps and I'm going to have to cross that bridge when I get there. But today is not that day. I just knew it. It's got to be you. I just know it. Not me. Not Hermione. Yo. Oh, I need to finish that. I got to wear that to our Christmas party tomorrow. <laughs> Crap. Charlotte loved it. We're going to wear... Um, matching sweaters. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie was not better than the book or any book or any tax form for that matter. <laughs> I never saw the movie, but I do remember reading the book, but I remember nothing about it other than the fact that I did not love it when I first read it. But I think I don't really know what I was expecting from it. Okay, wait. How do I... How do I make... Can I like... I want to see the full list. This one. Oh, wait. How do I mark it? Oh. What? I don't want to do... Okay. Um, okay, I want that one. Search for the shining jellyfish. Is it out here? All movies are better than the books because I don't like to read. Well, that does make sense. If reading's not your thing, well then yeah. <gasps> there it is. Oh my gosh, we're gonna find him. You look like you could make me a lot of money. <laughs> Somebody will eat you. Do people eat jellyfish? No. Uh, I don't wanna get stung by you. Uh. Wait, oh, okay. <gasps> Where are you, buddy? Oh, there he is! <gasps> oh my gosh, I love him! Okay. Got your food, buddy. <gasps> is he still in here? Should I check on it? Well, yeah. Hello. We've got food for you, buddy. What does Kalulu eat? Yeah. Hey, it's John yeah. Steed! Seriously, perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect timing. Here it is. Oh my gosh. Let's try it. It doesn't seem like it's calmed down to me, but... That's the food, right? Or am I supposed to, like, pick it up? Oh, I'm supposed to, like, put it in this random bowl that just appeared here? Oh! Oh, that is the food, for sure! <gasps> oh my gosh! It's him! Look at him! He's so cute! Oh my gosh. Heck yeah, bug net. Got him! Oh my gosh. This is the perfect ending to a stream. What do I do with the food? All right, somebody else can... Someone else can uh, have it. Bon appetit! It was so cute. Baby Zoidberg, yeah. It does kind of look like a baby Zoidberg. Absolutely Kalulu. <gasps> I thought maybe we'd be catching Kalulu and like chopping it up and feeding it to our people, but I don't think that's the case. Maybe not. <laughs> Marker. <sighs> it's the whole reason I played this game. I guess we can stop playing this game now. 
<laughs> in the flesh. Yeah, Kalulu in the flesh. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're supposed to come back in the game tomorrow. Like we're supposed to do one more night of sushi and then come back here in the game tomorrow and then we'll go to the glacier. Okay, that's perfect because I'm gonna have to go get Odd in here in a minute anyway. And um, <laughs> if Kalulu is the final menu item, I don't know if I would actually finish the game. I don't know. I consider this my B-Day present. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that. You didn't give anything away. I thought that was perfect because I thought maybe, okay, I have to go do something in order to move forward with the story. So it was perfect the way you said that. There is a vitally important sea person mission. So the rest of these missions I don't really have to do. That's fair. Dave, you are the goat. Oh, we did it. We found Kalulu. He's safe. He's fed. In the flesh. In the pixels. <laughs> Unsure how to call the layer outside of a squid. Definitely not skin. I don't know what I would call that either. Uh... I don't know. I have no idea. Well, it said um, cuttlefish skin. Like, to upgrade my weapons. So I guess it is skin. Oh. I love those tiny... I should cross-stitch those tiny little faces. Oh, here he is, lady. 50 bay. <gasps> Sergio's portrait! Oh my goodness. I get to hang that... I get to hang a portrait of Kalulu up in my restaurant. Is there a more perfect game for me? I think not. <sighs> I love Kalulu so much. Little cutie patoot. You know what? I should probably pay, play cards with that guy and um, get the beluga whistle because I don't like having to swim through the entire like area. It just takes forever. I think you're supposed to be able to travel on the beluga like really fast, but I didn't want to play that card game with that guy. I always, I don't love little mini games within games, especially if they're card games. Final Fantasy IX had a card game that I was like, what? I don't understand. I'm really bad at those tiny kinds of things. <laughs> I know, we've reached peak Susie stream. We found Kalulu. And all in time, all just in time for DJ's birthday this weekend. It was like it was meant to be. Oh, Lindsay, John, you have to go back to the beginning of this VOD, kind of sort of the beginning, because we did a r Duff, the weapons guy, had, oh, what am I doing? I need to just travel to the boat. He had this insane dream where I, it was almost like rock band meets Guitar Hero, and I had to like, meet, meets Beat Saber, and I had to like move my controllers and everything. I had to change controllers. I'm not using my pro controller anymore. It was very fun. It was great. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> Duff was having the time of his life. Gelato. <laughs> I do love gelato. I think we have a gelato place nearby. I won't lie, when all these little ice cream places open up, I'm like, is there really that big of a demand for ice cream? Oh, that's right. And we get a grenade launcher. All I got. Oh, that's right. Because I can race these seahorses. I don't want to race seahorses. Oh, this is what I got through the... Oh, I forgot all about all that stuff. <laughs> forgot about it all. And we have... Oh, shoot. I gotta go wake Auden. What is happening? My controllers just started, like, shaking. Man, so... Something is happening. Oh, this freaking guy. There's another boss fight, I'm sure. Oh, 
Oh, because it's raining. <laughs> choo -choo. Dave's like, really? Grow up, Ash. Okay. This is, I don't want to get, I don't want to get wrapped up in, in things because it'll take me forever. So this is where I'm going to save. Um, I'm going to save right here and we will literally dive into all of this come Monday. Let me go wake Auden really quick. Yeah, it's like older Ash Ketchum. Charlotte's been watching this new, um, Pokemon I don't think it's new, but it's not a Pokemon I recognize. But Ash definitely has a very different voice. I remember the voice of Ash from when my sister used to watch Pokemon when she was little and the voices have changed, which makes sense. That was a long time ago. But ugh, when I listen to Charlotte watch this Pokemon show, I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, I'm not a Pokemon fan. It doesn't do anything for me. That's not to say that I judge other people that like Pokemon, but the show... I, she was also watching the Netflix Garfield show the other day, and I was like, this has to be the laziest cartoon I've ever seen in my life. The animation, the voice acting, the, the writing, all of it. And Charlotte loves it. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, it's family friendly. It's not hurting you or anything. It's not inappropriate. It's just... It's so lazy and cheap. Like the animate, the corners they cut, but the animation is just absolutely insane. I cannot believe they get away with it. Let me go grab Auden. Hold on. Oh, you're a sleepy little pumpkin. Little sweaty, sleepy pumpkin. <laughs> Lazy and cheap sounds totally on brown for Garfield. I was kind of surprised uh, because when they announced the new Garfield coming with um, Chris Pratt as the voice actor, I don't, I don't see that. Garfield to me seems, you know, he's super fat and lazy and he's a he's not he's not very spry and that's his character that's how he's written and so chris pratt's energetic voice just doesn't fit for me and maybe it'll end up being a really great movie i don't know but it certainly it just wasn't really my it doesn't really look like my cup of tea but um i honestly haven't seen really many ads for animated movies coming out that i've been very excited about Last one that I was semi-interested in was the third Trolls movie. And that one was fine. It was good, but it wasn't, like, amazing. I haven't seen anything that I'm like, holy cow, I can't wait for that. I don't know, as far as animated movies go. But, um, my friends, this is where we're going to leave it for today and for this weekend. The party will be over after tomorrow, and I am so, so grateful. The CG Garfield, you mean like the Look new um, the new one that's coming out has Chris Pratt as a voice actor. It's all CGI. And the animation looks great, but I just didn't, I just don't feel like Chris Pratt, he's too energetic for a kind of lazy cat that eats all the time. I don't know. It's just, maybe it'll work. I'm not really sure. But um, uh, I... Um, this is, uh, this is where we'll leave it today. We have an event. We've got this like Marlin event and we just had an earthquake. So we've got to go check on our sushi place. And, um, no, no, I'm talking about, um, no, I don't consider them lazy voice actors. The, the Netflix, the Netflix Garfield, I'm almost positive doesn't have any of those people in it. Those are way too big of names. It's like, 
Um, he's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. Hmm. Are you sleepy? You're gonna go get sissy in a little bit. Um, no, it's this Netflix one that I'd never heard of until I remember the old cartoon when I was little. But this one is like 3D and it's just, it's just bad. Every time Charlotte watches it and I hear it, I'm like, who signed off on this? This writing is awful, but I guess it's for like kids her age. But um, the party is gonna be over tomorrow and um, I will feel slightly less stressed out about that. Um, really? Maybe they do have, maybe that's who they are. Now I need to look. Okay, in a minute. Garfield. I'm not a huge Garfield fan anyway. Like, Garfield is funny, but I... Okay. Well, it's not coming up on my IMDb. There's Garfield the movie. There's another Garfield, the movie, that came out in 1990... No, I'm sorry, in 2004. There's Garfield and Friends, which was out in 1988. Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties. Garfield Christmas Special. The Garfield Show. That's what it's... That's what it is. It's 2008. It's the TV series. Oh, Jason Marsden. Yep, there's that name. I don't recognize any of the people in any of this, but all I know is the writing is terrible and the animation is awful. But look, Mac Mark Hamill even did a voice in it. And Phil Lamar. And Maurice LaMarche. Or whatever his name is, however you pronounce that. Okay, so they may not have a bad cast, but they have really awful acting and really awful, awful animation. The animation is so bad. You need what? Okay, let me just finish this up, okay? But um, uh, I appreciate you guys being here so much, always hanging out with me and spending some time with me throughout the day. Um, it always boosts my spirits. It always makes me feel better. It gives me energy and it fills my bucket and I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate every one of you and I appreciate this community so much. Um, so just remember how important you are and how much you matter. And uh, I love spending time with you guys. So I hope everybody has a really good weekend. And if you do pizza night or something, treat yourself. DJ's birthday is on Sunday. So have an excellent birthday weekend. Um, can I highlight the whole fetching Kalulu mission? You bet I can. Absolutely. That's super easy to do. Can highlight fetching Kalulu. Um, that deserves a highlight because Kalulu is our world. And... Um, uh, I only have, we only have one more week. Um, uh, wait, your son's birthday is on the 17th too? That's my dad's birthday. Hi. Waking up is hard. I know. Mwah. But I hope everybody has an excellent weekend. Um, yeah, yeah, Sunday is the 17th. That's my dad's birthday. Aunt Pearl's birthday. Oh, the 18th. Okay, it's the day after. Close enough. Close enough. December birthdays unite. Um, but, uh, I'll be back on Monday and we will continue with Dave the Diver. We've got some exciting things coming up. I don't know how long Dave the Diver is. I honestly have no idea. Um, I don't know, but I am thoroughly enjoying myself. It's a super fun game and they always throw these crazy surprises in. The boss fights are really crazy. I'm really, really enjoying myself. So, um, I'll see everybody back on Monday and just remember to choose kindness, especially this time of year. This is just a really, really... Um, oh, I'm a little more than halfway. Oh, perfect. That is perfect. Well then, you know, d given what the poll was last time, uh, I think Final Fantasy VI is on the horizon after this one. This one is more like after doing Outer Wilds that was kind of more story driven. It was, it's really nice to be playing something that yes, has a story, but also is just kind of like fun and you don't have to pay super close attention. And it's just, you know, it's just a good time. But after this, I will be ready to get back into kind of a more story driven game again. And then I have to remember that um, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two is being released at the end of February. And I know that's still a ways off, but that's going to be on the horizon as, as well. So... 
Um, have an excellent weekend, everybody. And um, thank you so much for being here and for all your support and everything. I really appreciate it a lot. You guys are all wonderful people, amazing humans. So keep being amazing humans for just for the sake of yourself and for everyone around you. You're all awesome. So thank you for being a part of my community. And uh, I appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Adios, cheerio, ta-ta, bye-bye. <laughs>